Hello viewers, this is Dr. P. Mary Anupuma. Today, let us study about genetic control of antibody diversity. What is antibody diversity? We, the humans, we have around 10 to the power of 5 genes. We just have 10 to the power of 5 genes, but we have the capacity of producing around 10 to the power of 6 different types of antibodies. So you can see that the number of antibodies that we can produce is more than the number of genes. And this is explained saying that during the early stages of development, we have this uh, germline DNA, which has multiple gene segments, which are encoding for the portions of both light chain and heavy chain. And during B cell maturation, random shuffling occurs that would result in this 10 to the power of 6 combinations. The B cell differentiation, it starts from a progenitor cell to a mature cell and that involves an organized progression of immunoglobulin gene rearrangements. By the time the B cell matures, it will contain a full functional variation of DNA sequence for its heavy chain and a single functional V region for its light chain which will form the specific antigenically committed B cell antibodies for an epitope. The chromosomal DNA content is no longer identical to the germline DNA content as we can see in the figure below. So here you can see this is the hemopoietic stem cell which is naive and it does not have any surface antibodies. So this upon stimulus it divides to form it starts differentiating to form the lymphoid cells and at this stage partial heavy chain gene rearrangement takes place. This lymphoid cell becomes the pre-B cell and here you can see complete heavy chain gene rearrangement taking place. Then this differentiates into the pre-B cell. During this process, the complete heavy chain gene, re gene rearrangement has taken place and you have uh, the IgM mu chain, okay, the mu heavy chain, plus you have a surrogate light chain in these pre-B cells. Now, these pre-B cells, as they become immature B cells, light chain gene rearrangement takes place. Now, these are the immature B cells. These have a small IgM, membrane IgM on the surface. Then here, there are changes in the RNA processing which take place and finally you have the mature B cell. And this mature B cell, it has membrane bound IgM and membrane bound IgD on its surface. You can clearly see, here immature B cell has IgM, while mature B cell it has IgM as well as IgD on its surface. So this mature B cell upon antigenic stimulus, the B cell it gets activated. So here differentiation will take place wherein the B cell it becomes a memory cell and a plasma cell. So here the memory cell goes while this is our plasma cell which accumulates lots of rough endoplasmic reticulum the protein synthesizing machinery that is required for the synthesis of antibodies and at this time it's producing IgM while intense stimulus will be taking place and here you can see class switching taking place so the plasma cells they can produce IgG or IgA or IgM till here it is in the bone marrow then from here once it is mature it goes and settles in the secondary lymphoid organs and those lymphoid organs, all this activity will be taking place. So what you can see is that there is a switching continuously taking place. And here you have this IgG, IgA and IgE production due to class switching. Multiple gene organization of immunoglobulin genes. So cloning and sequencing studies were done of both kappa chain and light chains and heavy chains. And they revealed that there are some coding genes, some coding sequences, multiple gene families are there situated on different chromosomes. Say for example in the humans, the lambda chain is present on chromosome 22. The kappa chain, we can see it on chromosome 2. 
while heavy chain on chromosome 14 while in the mouse you can see that the lambda chain is on chromosome 16 kappa chain on chromosome 6 and heavy chain sequences are the gene segments they are present on chromosome 12 so each of these families they contain coding sequences and we call them as gene segments the kappa chain and the lambda chain families they consist of L, V, J and C gene segments. Okay, The light chains, the kappa chain and the lambda chain are the light chains. These chains, they consist of L, V, J and C gene segments. While well, heavy chain gene family, it consists of L, V, D, J and C gene segments. So we have this uh, rearrangement taking place and the rearranged V and J gene segments. Okay, these code for the V region of the light chain. That is the V and the J segments. They code for the variable region of the light chain. While rearrangements resulting in VDJ segments. Okay, VDJ segments. They encode for the variable region of the heavy chain. While the C gene segments which we were talking about. They code for the constant regions of both light chain and heavy chain. We have separate gene segments for that. The L gene segments, they encode for a short signal. We call it as the reader sequence. That guides these chains through the endoplasmic reticulum. And later on, um, that is cleaved before the immunoglobulin is assembled. Lambda chain multigene family. So we have the functional lambda V region gene containing two coding segments we call them as exons at 5 prime end we have the V segment and at the 3 prime end we have the J segment these are separated by non-coding DNA sequences which we call them as introns so in the mice you have lambda multiple gene family which consists of 3 V lambda gene segments 4 J lambda gene segments and 4 C lambda gene segments. While in us, there are 31 V lambda gene segments, 4 J lambda gene segments, then 7 C lambda gene segments. Apart from this, we also have what are known as pseudo genes. So here, the J lambda 4 and the C lambda 4, these are the defective genes. Okay, these are the pseudo genes. <clears throat> and the constant region, it is coded by the functional C lambda gene segments. These encode for the three lambda subtypes which we have. That is the lambda 1, lambda 2 and lambda 3. So here we can see the leader sequence which will be cut off later. This is the VK variable region. This is for uh, sorry V lambda. This is the J lambda and this is the C lambda region. Okay, Here also we have this is the C lambda 2. This is J lambda 2, J lambda 4. While here this is C lambda 2, C lambda 4 and so on and so forth. So we have here C lambda 1, J lambda 3 because we have several types of uh, light chains, lambda chains, lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. So accordingly we have all these gene segments available except that the lambda 4 and lambda, the, sorry, the J lambda 4 and C lambda 4 these are the pseudo ones of no use to us okay pseudo ones represented like this then the kappa chain multigene family we know that kappa chains are another type of light chains which we have and in mouse family they contain around 85 V kappa gene segments which have uh, adjacent leader sequences like this and they are located upstream towards the 5 prime end. So there are around 5 
J lambda sequences gene segments of which one is the non-functional pseudogene and you have a C lambda gene segment sorry C kappa gene segment over here the VK and the JK gene segments they encode for the variable region while there is only one constant gene segment in human beings we have around 40 kappa gene segments 5 J kappa segments and 1 C kappa that is constant kappa gene segment now coming to the heavy gene along with the VH and JH gene segments a third family of gene segment which we call it as the genes D that is diversity they are also required to generate the antibody diversity in the human chromosome 14 they contain 51 VH gene segments each preceded by a later gene sequence then they have this D gene segment which contributes to diversity there are 27 DH gene segments and these are located downstream to the VH gene segments next are located 6 functional GH gene segments these gene segments they contain coding exons and in between you have this non-coding introns the exons encode for encoding for the constant region of an immunoglobulin H chain isotype they are here located downstream to it the CH gene segments they are arranged sequentially in the order like this you have the C mu followed by that is the constant region coding for IgM which gives mu chain which has mu chain then the C delta for IgD then you have C alpha sorry C gamma that is for IgG then we have C epsilon which is for IgE then C alpha for IgE this is related to the sequential appearance of immunoglobulin classes during embryonic development we know that IgM is the first one to be encoded by a B cell on its surface this is followed by IgD then followed by IgG so the BH gene segments they were found to encode the amino acids 1 to 94 while the J gene segments they were found to encode the amino acids between 98 to 113 you also have the D gene segments these carry the information to encode the amino acids 95 to 97 variable region gene arrangements the L chain it undergoes VJ gene arrangements that is the light chain undergoes VJ rearrangements so in us any of the functional V lambda genes they can combine with uh, the four any of the four functional J lambda and then C lambda combinations while in mice we have V lambda 1 gene segment and this can join with J lambda 1 or J lambda 3 gene segments or V lambda 2 can join with J lambda 2 gene segments also but in the case of uh, kappa chain rearrangements any of the VK gene segments that is V kappa gene segments they can join with any of the J kappa gene a rearranged kappa and lambda genes they contain the following regions in the order from 5 prime to 3 prime so the first one to start at the 5 prime end is the short leader sequence that is the L exon then followed by a non-coding sequence an intron will be there then a joined VJ gene segment will be there and then a gap second intron will be there and then a constant region will be there upstream to the leader gene segment uh, is present a promoter sequence so this RNA polymerase it transcribes these genes until a stop signal is reached after the C gene segment 
okay once it reach there then that will result in the formation of a l chain primary rna transcript l chain primary rna transcript the introns present in the primary transcript they are removed by rna processing enzymes we have recombinases resulting in l chain mrna with a poly a tail then the l chain mrna it is transported from the nucleus to the place where it has to be translated into l chain protein the leader sequence present at the amino terminus of that protein that pulls it into the lumen of rough endoplasmic reticulum then the leader sequence of that protein is cleaved off and finally we get a finished light chain protein so it goes like this we have the variable regions which can join with any of the j regions the v regions can join with any of the j regions these things they have a leader sequence so here we see that the v kappa 23 it has come together with this one so they have come together you have a intron separating these two so this is the rearranged kappa chain dna from this we have the transcription taking place and this is the primary rna transcript that we obtain this primary rna transcript this is subjected to polyadenylation and then rna splicing resulting in the formation of l v j and this one comes here while splicing this entire thing is removed off so here you can clearly see this mrna transcript having the leader sequence v j and the constant region along with the poly a tail now this mrna transcript is subjected to translation and you have this nascent polypeptide which has the leader sequence having the leader protein now next this is processed as it enters the rough endoplasmic reticulum into the lumen the leader sequence is removed finally resulting in the kappa light chain when we talk about this heavy chain it undergoes vdj rearrangements the heavy chain genes they require two separate rearrangements for the v region the first it's a dh gene segment which joins jh segment and this would result in dh jh segment which moves and next joins a vh segment resulting in the vh dh j this is the vdj unit of a heavy chain and this encodes for the entire variable region of the heavy chain the variable rearrangement the variable region rearrangements that would result in genes having the following sequences from 5 prime end to 3 prime end along with the uh, short uh, leader sequence l exon so it has an intron first is a shorter l, l exon then an intron then the joint vdj segment then another intron and then a series of c gene segments then a promoter sequence is present uh, towards the upstream towards the upper end of the leader sequence then to this uh, rearranged heavy gene chain rna polymerase binds at the promoter sequence and transcribes it then you have the c mu and c delta gene segments they are both transcribed polyadenylation and rna splicing removal of introns all these would result in mrna which has one of the c mu and c delta coding sequences the mrna are translated in the cytoplasm now we get peptides after translation the resulting peptides leader sequence is cleaved off and finally that would generate the finished mu heavy chain or a delta heavy chain so this explains the expression of both mu chain as well as heavy chain that is igm and igd 
on a immunocompetent B cell. They have both of them, they have identical antigenic specificity on their surface. So here is how the rearrangement is taking place. These are the variable gene segments. This is the D that is diversity gene segments, the J gene segments and the constant gene segments. Initially, DJ joining is taking place. So this and this they have come together. Now, this will join a variable region. So this you call it as the VDJ joining which is taking place. And here you have a later sequence followed by VDJ segments. And you have all these chains of heavy chains there. Now this is subjected to transcription. In transcription what do you see? We have LVDJ. Along with that two constant regions, constant region gene segments are left out. That is the C mu as well as C delta. So at this stage polyadenylation and RNA splicing that is removal of this part all these things will be taking place and either we will get this transcript or this one. So this is a mRNA transcript which consists of L, V, D, J and C mu. So that would result in the heavy chain of IgM. While here uh, you have along with that we have the polyadenylation tail. And here we have L, V, D, J having C delta along with the poly A tail. Now these when subjected to translation would result in a nascent polypeptide that has the later sequence that directs them into the lumen of endoplasmic reticulum where it is spliced off resulting in the heavy chain mu heavy chain or delta heavy chain. Mechanism of V region DNA rearrangements. So we have this recombinational recombination signal sequences. So these sequences they are located at the three prime end of each of the V gene segment at phi prime end of each J gene segment and at both the ends of D gene segments. So these are the recombination signal sequences abbreviated as RSS. So these consist of a poly palindromic heptamer, palindromic heptamer and they have intervening 12 to 23 base pair sequences and an anomer sequence which is rich in 18. So the 12 or the 23 base pair sequence corresponds to a gap of one or two turns of the DNA double helix. Hence these are also called one turn recombination signal sequences and two turn signal sequences. These gaps ensure that a V lambda gene segment joins a J segment and so on. For an L chain, V lambda signal sequence has a two turn spacer and a J lambda signal sequence has one turn spacer and heavy chain both VH and GH segments have two turn spacers and a DH gene segment it has one turn spacer at both the ends. So recombinases these are the enzymes that are involved in joining these gene segments and we have two proteins also RAG1 and RAG2 and a terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase enzyme all these are involved in VDJ rearrangements. So this is the two turn RSS while this is the one turn RSS. So the two turn RSS it has heptamer and a nanomer separated by a 23 base pair sequence and this is rich in 18. While here one turn one it has an anomer and an heptamer separated by 12 base pairs. And location of this RSS in germline immunoglobulin DNA here you can see the lambda chain DNA it has here the sequences are here kappa chain and then the heavy chain they are towards the 3 prime end while the J chain has them towards the 5 prime end while the D segment it has 
at both 5 prime and as well as the 3 prime and enabling their recombination. Generation of antibody diversity. There are numerous germ lines of VDJ gene segments. In us, in humans, we have 51 VH gene segments, 25D, 6J, and 40 VH gene segments. In case of kappa, we have 5J kappa gene segments, 31 V lambda gene segments, and around 4 J lambda gene segments. So we have to, if we have to calculate and estimate the diversity, the heavy chain diversity can be attained can be attained by recombination of 51 VH gene segments with any of the 27 DH gene segments which in turn can combine with any of the 6 JH gene segments. Therefore, the possible number of combinations are like this 8262. In the same way when it comes to kappa chain, 40 VH, V kappa segments are there which can join with any of the 5 J, gene seg J kappa segments and that would result in around 200 combinations. When it comes to lambda, we have 30 V lambda regions and 4 J lambda gene segments. So these can give rise to a combination of 120. And we have this junctional flexibility, P and N nucleotide addition, somatic hyper, uh, hypermutations, all these contribute to antibody diversity. So, as we have seen, there are 8,262 possible combinations when it comes to our heavy chain, 200 for kappa, while 120 for lambda. Now, when these three have to come together, the possible combinations, they are 8,262 into 200 into 120, that is we have 2.64 into 10 to the power of 6 combinations. In the mice, similarly you can see it is 2.41 into 10 to the power of 6 combinations. So this is what is antibody diversity. Random combination of these things would result in so many types of antibodies within us. Now synthesis, assembly and secretion of immunoglobulin. So we have seen that both the heavy chain and light chains, they are uh, translated, they are uh, translated on separate ribosomes and all, polyribosomes attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they result in the synthesis of both light chains and heavy chains having leader sequences. Now these leader sequences, they guide them into the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So once they enter the lumen there, we have seen that the uh, leader sequence is cleaved off. Then comes the assembly of L and H chains. This is done via disulfide linkages. And then their glycosylation will be taking place in the cisternae of rough endoplasmic reticulum and finally yield the immunoglobulin molecule. So these are transported through the Golgi apparatus. They form separate vesicles and they transport the immunoglobulins towards the outside. The secretory vesicles, they fuse with the plasma membrane and the order of chain assembly also, it varies. In case of IgM, the heavy chain and light chain assemble first to form half molecule of uh, IgG in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then the two halves, uh, then the two halves of the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then they come together and then they form the complete IgM. So half of it will come together and form IgM. We can understand that from this figure. So here we have the polyribosomes on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. These are producing the proteins. Now these are guided inside by the leader sequence. Leader sequences are removed, then half immunoglobulins are produced. Then their assembly will be taking place. Then these move into the Golgi apparatus. So in the Golgi apparatus, you have a oligosaccharide addition, glycosylation will be taking place. These are glycoproteins, so oligosaccharide addition will be taking place and finally they are secreted out. Okay. These are secreted out through small vesicles as they fuse with the cell membrane, they will be just secreted out at times. 
we also have the membrane bound IgG so in these cases you have a transmembrane segment which will be holding them onto this membrane so these vesicles diffuse with the membrane thereby projecting the immunoglobulin towards outside while it is retained on the surface of the cell so this is all about antibody secretion we have studied diversity the beauty of genetic diversity how we are getting all those combinations and then how immunoglobulin is getting secreted or produced out by a cell thank you